Welcome back. This is part two of the PN Racing um, PN70 motor mount that they've just come out with, recently released. And I am determined to exhaust every um, option in order to make this thing work with the motor mounted in the forward position like they show in the picture. I know that the ESC is not going to mount right. It's probably going to stick to the motor instead of the battery or the uh, ESC tray. I'm cool with that. I'll just have to use a little bit of 3M uh, that adhesive kind of spongy tape to put it on there. Hopefully it won't sit up too high that it interferes with the body. But what I have decided to do, since I have an extra deadbolt upper suspension um, link, this is a brand new one for the front. In order to clear the motor completely, I'm going to turn into a three link and basically cut it right there and hope that only one side will be enough to handle keeping that front axle in place. It may or may not work, I don't know, but I'm gonna try it, and if it works, great, we know how to fix it. If it doesn't, then I'm gonna go ahead and flip this motor around so that the motor faces backwards the same as the Shapeways mounts. And uh, even though if it turns out to not be successful from a uh, forward mounting point, it's still a successful um, swap in the fact that um, I'll have three different pinion gears to choose from, as well as having a lower CG for the um, engine, provided that it doesn't hit the uh, rear suspension links after it's flipped. I don't think it would. It sits up pretty high. But um, the upper front was a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save the one that's here and just start kind of cutting on this one and, and hope for the best. I thought about this a lot today and decided that I would try this. And I basically turned the upper front suspension into a single bar. Now it's a three link front suspension. And I would never do this if it was a road car that I was going to drive in. But because it's an RC car, I think it's going to be fine. Um, that's a tight enough joint here and here where they connect that um, I feel like there's not a lot of play here and there's not a lot of play here. And I don't really know. I mean, there's obviously a little bit of side to side motion that can happen. But I don't think it's super critical, and I do really want to mount this motor uh, with the uh, motor forward position. And I feel like this is my best opportunity to try it. This is the arm I cut off. It's just the whole thing. I'm going to save that because I'll probably use it on some other project. But at this point, I think I can go ahead and install the uh, motor and transmission. And with any luck, it will go in well without binding on anything else. All right, with the um, single sided link there, it solved the issue of the control arm hitting the motor right here because it's not there anymore. It's now a three link suspension and this does provide enough stability side to side that it's gonna be fine. That. Uh, Link issue is solved. I'm not worried about that anymore. However, um, I guarantee either PN Racing did not test this properly or they knew about stuff and they didn't care. And they just put it out anyway because they'd already tied enough money in, up in it that they probably just wanted it out. So what I'm facing now is I cannot even put this piece of paper between the drive shaft yoke and the motor. It should slip through like this, but down where the yoke is, it cannot. And that drive shaft is touching the motor. So um, that's a quick way to burn motors out. They didn't even test it. Um, I'm gonna go from a 10 tooth to an 11 tooth, which isn't what I want in a crawler, but it will raise the motor some more on the pinion. If I go 10 tooth pinion, it has more torque. The 11 tooth pinion has less torque but more speed, but it will raise that motor slightly. And I'm gonna have to find out if I can get that piece of paper through there with the 11 tooth. Hopefully I can. 
it doesn't probably need very much but it will not slide through there another interesting thing that I found out and I removed a wheel for this little piece is looking up into the engine bay this is the control arm that I had to keep and I don't know if you can see that very well let me zoom in okay so this is the arm that I kept right here this the other one is removed if this suspension compresses all the way look what it hits it hits the motor lead the positive motor lead here and also the suspension just the front suspension link itself hits the end bell of the motor where the bearing is so um, I don't know how much of a problem that is and the reason why is um, with both wheels on even at full droop sitting there it does not come in contact unless you push it down and there's several millimeters of travel left in it and I think that's a good thing uh, the only reason you would ever take one of these shocks to full compression is in the event of you're going over an obstacle and the shock is pushed up all the way it can do that because what's happening when you're pushing one side all the way up the other side is still down and it's providing clearance not much but it looks like it's enough so that those suspension pieces don't actually hit so um if i ran with no springs it would definitely be a problem because this link and the motor mount would hit the motor up in there so that would be a problem since i do run springs i don't think it's going to be an issue so um what i'm going to do is pull the motor once again and it should be a pretty easy process i'm hoping um maybe not but what i'll do is i'll pull it out i'll put the 11 tooth pinion in and hopefully that will give it enough lift on the motor that uh, i'll be able to um, be able to clear the drive shaft yokes from the uh, motor case itself one very nice thing about this chassis that i'm finding out is if you want to pull your motor to put a different pinion on you don't even have to remove the mount it'll come out if you've cut it adequately and uh, while this is out i'm just going to have a look and see how the drivetrain works it's all going pretty well nothing's binding slot but i've taken out the the things that would bind i clearanced the uh, control arm right here with my dremel tool before i even put it in so i wouldn't get a binding point down here where the uh, bottom of this ball could touch the drive shaft that's been clearanced i also clearanced this out a little bit and just kind of cupped it on this control arm because I wanted the uh, with with the only a single link one one missing here I wanted this one to have all the chance it could to not hit and uh, motors burn up when chassis bind when drivetrains bind and this is a very free moving system it works really well and uh, I just have to get the motor in working right so here comes an 11 tooth. We're going to hope that uh, the 11 tooth works a little better than this one did. And uh, just from seeing the wear marks on the gear, um, where they are, kind of the witness marks, with a little gap here, it's the gears riding on the very edge of this, um, on the very edge of this pinion. So when I put it on next time, I'm going to close this little gap between the spur gear and the uh, bearing on the end of the motor because it can be a lot tighter than that. I don't want to make it too tight because I want to be able to pop it back off if I need to, but um, I think we're on the right track here. 11 tooth. Remember earlier in the previous video, how I left some extra meat here for uh, stability for this piece well I'm gonna have to shave some of that off because 
when you raise the motor, the uh, um, leads on this side and all this business here come up into that plastic. So some of that's going to have to go away. And uh, I'll do that with my Dremel off camera. That is the ESC tray after um, cutting it. Unfortunately, I nicked it right there earlier uh, during part one of this video. But I left enough meat there that hopefully it'll still clear and yet provide side to side stability between those two pieces. Um, this one and this one. Hopefully these two will be strong enough to provide enough cross support uh, between the front two wheels. Um, and also hopefully that was enough that it will be able to uh, completely clear the motor regardless of what, which uh, pinion I choose. When you're cutting this, make sure you don't leave an ear like I did right here. This little piece sticking out, I thought it would be fine, but the motor gets into it. So when you uh, are cutting that out, make sure that you cut it flush. It'll be much better for you later on. These are just uh, nail clippers that I got at the grocery store, but they're really good. I use them all the time for uh, RC cars. Even though I feel like PN ignored some serious issues on this uh, motor mount, there are some things I really like about it. The fact that you can take the motor out without removing the uh, transmission from the, the chassis, that's fantastic. The ability to adjust the gear mesh by loosening these two screws right here and sliding the motor up and down. Also, that's a home run as well. Um, both those things are fantastic. And um, I left a little bit extra on the front here. It's not so much that I can't push past this with the uh, little end bell where the bearing goes on the actual motor, but um, it's starting to look like a car. And uh, once I get the gear mesh set, which is actually pretty easy because they have provided me with this little window in the backside that I can look in and see how those gears are lining up. They're tight, but not so tight that they can't move. I like that. That's uh, a good mesh. All the way. I'm just going to check it all the way around. And PN, even though I'm a little bit irritated with this kit here, they do make really good stuff. The machining on the on uh, their products are very good. Um, they just tried to fit too much in where it can't fit right now with this uh, particular. Um, uh, motor mount. I'm going to overlook it. And I like that. So I'm going to tighten it down right there. Tighten this fully. I'll check it one more time just to make sure it didn't move while I tightened it. Pretty excited this is uh, starting to come together into a viable car with the motor mount forward now, I will have to deal with some issues regarding the um, ESC because it's gonna have to go in diagonally just because this motor and mount sits so much higher than the uh, mount next to it I don't think it'll be much of an issue though because you know you can mount a piece of plastic anywhere that doesn't matter so much but um, get these tucked back down in there there's enough gap here that uh, I can run that out and I will make sure that these wires don't get into that spur that uh, spur gear back there because that'll be bad it'll it'll tear them up if it touches it but um, Back to the uh, tail of the tape. Can I put a tape between the motor and, oh, look at that. That works. 
So when you get your 10 tooth pinion, throw it away. If you don't throw it away, it's probably going to hit your issue. That is how it should have gone before. I could not put that tape, piece of paper actually, between the end of the drive shaft yoke and the motor. It did not have the clearance. Um, another thing that did was I can almost go to full compression now. And uh, it, raised, it raised the motor quite a bit, which is good and bad. It's bad from a CG standpoint, but good from the uh, point where we look at this uh, link hitting all this up here. And I feel like that will never be a problem. I'm not even worried about that hitting anymore. That should never be a problem. Because both sides can't compress at the same time. And that's the only way that uh, they could get into each other in order to cause an issue. If a single side compresses, there's still plenty of clearance where you won't have any concerns. All right, um, I would have done since the last thing is I put some 3M uh, double-sided sticky tape here. I still have to peel the red um, top layer off, but I have uh, placed the ESC on it and um, I'm gonna make sure that it clears the front tire and um, I'm gonna mount it back a little bit but I'm going to connect the um, steering servo wire before I mount it down for permanent because if I don't, it's going to hit this right here. And I don't, don't want to mess with it any more than I need to later. Um, I'm also going to take this battery wire off because the next step is going to be... Um, adding one of these, the Fury Tech Lizard. And that's gonna go on once I get this in a drivable state. And I think I'm almost there. Um, I think by the way these springs are now compressed, they're compressed pretty heavily. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I should do about that. I think it's gonna put the weight distribution really far forward, probably like greater than 70 30 so I'm probably going to add a um, brass diff cover to the back again I took it off in order to reach that 60 40 weight balance but honestly you only need enough weight on the rear axle to keep it from flipping over while doing descents um, really there's no other reason to have weight back there that's it just to keep from flipping over and I think with the motor this far forward that'll be beneficial it is quite a bit lower than it was before and I anticipate this thing to be a when I placed the ESC down I intentionally mounted it crooked that way if I when this burns out not if but when and it will it'll burn out um, but when it does I will be able to um, disconnect this lead here without having to take the whole ESC off. Also the bat, the uh, door closes over it completely. The wheel does not get into it whatsoever. So I think that's good. Also one thing it will do, this motor is heavy. This, this motor weighs 18 grams. I should have weighed this uh, ESC before I put it on there, but I didn't. And um, it's gonna help counterbalance that a lot of these uh, STX 24s sit like this with a lean towards the motor side whichever side your motor is on and that's due to the fact that they're not evenly balanced um, I'll do a side to side um, weight distribution on this later on and see how close I got it but uh, next I've just got to install the lizard this is a Furry Tech Lizard, and you can see that it's pretty small. And that's a really cool thing because it can easily be mounted right onto the back of this uh, ESC with a little bit of 3M tape. You can see that little tape I have there. 
But this is going to be where the lizard's going to live. Because I'll be able to um, plug the battery in. Let me, let me get a better angle on this. I've got a cluttered desk right now from everything I've been working on. But uh, I apologize for that. Um, the battery's going to plug in here, just like always. And this will not be used because I'm not hooking it up to a, a uh, brushless motor this time. So this whole thing, don't need it. Also, since we're hooking it up to a brushed motor, I don't need this whole series of wires. Um, what's going to happen is with a brushed motor, um, I didn't plan ahead very well. I should have just used straight wire and not one of these fancy plug wires like this because I'm going to have to cut it. But I'll save this end for another project. I'm sure I'll need it later. But I'm going to remove all three of is where a Bluetooth module can plug in. I've got one of those. This port here um, plugs into this wire here. And this wire connects to your ESC. This is very, very important that you do this right. If you mess this up, you'll fry your ESC. When you install this, the black wire must go towards the bottom of the ESC. It goes in your channel too. If you were to install it upside down, which would be hard, but it could probably be done. So double, triple check your white wires on top, your black wires on the bottom. If you somehow plug this in backwards, it will be identical to plugging your battery in backwards into the battery port on your SC and it'll fry it. So this will plug in once again to top port here and we'll go over that again once I have the motor wires secured here and um, I'll do this off camera I've got uh, soldering iron hot I should just be able to tap these three off don't get these hot when you do it and in fact uh, it might be smart to just just cut I decided I want this as clean as possible and rather than unsolder those I just clipped them off with those clippers you saw earlier and uh, all that's left is to uh, attach these two ends, throw a battery in it, and see what happens. What I'm about to do seems really wrong. There it went. I saved enough that I'll be able to uh, solder more wires onto that later and reuse it for a different motor. Or Perhaps if I need to make an extension cord for another rig like I did on this one previously. It needed it. It will not need it anymore just due to the fact that the Fury Tech already has an extension cord. It'll be able to reach clear to the back of the car. Um, before, with the amount of the way it was, the battery couldn't, the uh, battery cord couldn't reach the socket and I had to have an extension. This will be a quick and dirty lesson in soldering, and um, this is how I do it. It works great. I've uh, I learned how to do this back when I used to race slot cars, and um, I buy this acid flux on eBay, which is fantastic. What you do is you just paint it on the wires a little bit where you need to solder, and also I'm going to put just a tiny bit on these little pieces here and that is now ready to accept solder and before you try to connect a wire to anything you should tin it and uh, I'll show you the way I tin a wire and when I do this process they don't break I've never had a wire connection break on a uh, system that I have tinned like this there's some smoke, so you put some uh, solder on the end of it and just tap it and it'll soak that solder right in. Everywhere that there's uh, that acid flux, it, it just draws it in. It's fantastic. 
and it's good enough. I wanted to get a little extra there. And the idea behind what I'm doing is I want to have contact with this board as minimal time as possible. And um, I think I'm going to, since the black wire is going in there, I'm going to keep it black all the way through. And I'm going to touch this. Boom. Good. That's done. I don't think I got the board too hot. And the second one, I'm going to do the same process. If I do it real quick, it won't even transfer heat. Not much anyway. All right. We now have a lizard. Zooming back out, it is time to connect the previous wire that you saw. Let's see if it's long enough. Oh, I might have to mount it on top. Let's see. Worst case scenario, I go to the side. It won't look as pretty, but functionality sometimes has to triumph over beauty. And I think that's probably going to happen today. So, let's shove that in there. This is the one with the three holes. Make sure the pins line up. I'm sticking it in the top slot, the one closest to the edge. That's in there. All right. And it does not look like there's going to be enough room to have it wrap clear around. That's okay. I'll just mount it to the side here. And I'll be able to access the on off switch right here on the side. Not a problem. So the ESC is now going to be powered through um, channel 2, which is backwards. This switch no longer works. We've bypassed it. We're powering the bus. There's a common bus that um, supplies power to all of these. And once the lizard is powered on, this will also power on the bus. And everything will be powered. So the lights, the steering servo... The receiver within this, it's all going to work. So, um, all that's really left to do is secure that on. And I'll do that with this uh, 3M tape. Plug in a battery and the Bluetooth module, which is up here in my drawer. This is that Bluetooth module that comes with the kit. Very tiny connectors. And since this is the first time I'm going to be using it, I'll go ahead and stick it on there. Once I get the ESC programmed, it no longer needs to be there. It doesn't hurt anything if it is, but um, it doesn't need to be there. So I'll get that plugged in. Be very careful with these wires because they're very thin. Just added the red tape to the side of the ESC. And now the moment we've been waiting for. At least I've been waiting for it. I'm going to power this monster for the first time. And red on red, black on black. Here's one thing I do. I color code my um, the actual plugs on my wires so that when I plug them in, it's brain dead obvious. So I'm gonna do the same for this. Because I don't wanna ever do this backwards. Doing it backwards is killing everything if you did it. And uh, I'm not interested in buying all new electronics before I need to. They do fail and I've had to replace 
oh, three ESCs now. They burn out before the motors do. In my case, I don't I don't burn out motors, but ESCs go. I don't know where my black marker is, but I'll, I'll take care of that one. Anyway, it's all powered on. With the um, lizard in place, your ESC will now flash continuously. And that's an unfortunate thing, but it does. Um, the lights still work. I've got the... Uh, I've got my lights on the body with just a long cable. This is another thing I've done that maybe is unusual, but uh, I've got a single um, pair of wires that wise off into the both headlights. And um, that's it. Now, I have not programmed the ESC yet. I'm really hoping that it goes forward when I push forward. And of course it doesn't. So I guess if you want to have out of the box proper polarity on your ESC, don't do what I did. This is actually how you need to have the wires soldered to your um, lizard ESC. And uh, notice I leave the top um, wire port open and then I use the center one and the bottom one. I put the positive on the bottom and it works out great. Um, I had attempted to put this together from memory and couldn't actually remember how to do it right. And uh, a quick look at the instructions here shows these are your options for running a brush motor, believe it or not. And uh, I was doing exactly the opposite. There's only one way wrong, two ways right. And of course I did it backwards, so. Uh, fixed it now it works it runs in proper direction I'm having a little bit of trouble um, getting my uh, Bluetooth to link up it linked up once I took it off stupidly and now it doesn't want to relink so um, I get that fixed and then calibrate the ESC everything should be good all right I've been driving it for just a little bit just a few thoughts on um, what's gone on since I put it all together. So one thing I hadn't uh, considered, but it turns out to be really cool, is that metal heat uh, motor mount that we just installed acts as a gigantic heat sink. And this motor doesn't even get warm. It's just barely, barely warm to the touch. And uh, I'm still trying to get the ESC tuned with the Fury Tech, but um, it sticks like glue to the rocks with the front suspension now. I went ahead and added the um, brass stiff cover back to the uh, rear axle. I had previously taken it off, but um, with so much weight forward, I, I thought I could use a little more weight in the back again, and I was right. We'll do a little more testing later on to do the climb gradients and side hilling and just find out what it's capable of now. But um, the other thought I had is uh, I wanted to know how my three link front suspension would do since I removed the uh, driver's side arm from the upper link and you wouldn't even know it was gone. It drives exactly the same. There's no issues with side to, uh, side, to side movement. And so far I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. This is uh, I think going to be a really good car.